Good afternoon, everyone. As Elise said, thank you very much for joining us here online. We really appreciate that, especially as we all head into Memorial Day weekend. And at least up here in Boston, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, we're going to be talking today about Black Cat, uh, which is Valora's uh, data visualization and hosting platform. And as Elise said, I encourage questions. So um, best bet is to bounce them to her, and she'll fit them into the dialogue as we go. Hopefully you can see my screen. It has a little title window on there. If you're having any issues, again, please message Elise and let her know that you have an issue. All right, so let's dive in. So before we go right into data visualization and hosting, I thought I'd give just a little bit of background because Black Hat is uh, the platform that sits on top of our bigger platform, some of you know it, called Powerhouse. Um, and Powerhouse is what sets everything up so that it can be seen in Black Hat. So I thought I would talk for two minutes about what goes on there. Uh, but basically, before we can visualize data, which is kind of a fancy word for see it, uh, we have to talk about processing and tagging it. So processing, um, those folks who are on the e-discovery side of the house will be very familiar with this routine. The folks on the information governance side may not be as familiar. So um, what that really means is taking the raw files, um, whether they are scanned images, they were once paper and now they're scanned images, or they're native files like email or uh, just general uh, business documents like you might find on a shared drive, um, and taking those files from their raw state and extracting some amount of text for them because all of these kind of analytics are content analytics or text analytics and so they need text to work with. So when we have scanned images we use OCR or optical character recognition to convert just a simple image which basically to a machine looks like black on white um, to convert that into actual ASCII letter text um, and all the other ones that are kind of born digital files go through processing which is essentially a technique to pull text out of the native file so that it can be manipulated for all different types of purposes. Um, one of the things that happens at ingestion time, that's the ucky word that is used, I don't like it, but that's the word, um, when something's ingested into Powerhouse, there are a bunch of different things that happen at that time that are sort of related to, to the extraction of that text. Um, if the documents are not in English and we want to do English analytics, we might do some auto-translation. So if they're coming in in Spanish or Chinese or, or Greek or whatever, uh, they're going to get translated into English. Sometimes there can be reordering of the content. Um, a good example of that is sometimes um, an email transmission is really all about the attachments that are being transmitted and not the sort of parent level email. So we have some examples where the email actually gets moved to the back of the chain, back of the, the back of the sequence of text. And these are some of the fancy things that go on um, during intake and are considered part of processing. Um, you can think of processing as going from a native file to a text rendition. So in this case, a PDF, let's say, scanned image or other PDF, into a text extraction. Uh, the second step that happens as kind of background to data visualization is tagging. Um, you'll hear me use these phrases interchangeably, tagging, coding, indexing. Um, it, all of that is the process of extracting key data about a document or about a file and creating a populated database, fielded data of that information. So things like what kind of document a PDF, as I'm sure many of you know, can be anything. So is it a cash flow statement or is it a letter or is it a map? Um, those are all different types, what we call document types. Um, and so that data extraction, that coding step, um, is, the process, is the next process that comes along. First there's text extraction, then there's text analytics, also known as tagging, uh, where we go from text to fielded data. And in Valora's case, when we're using Powerhouse, which of course we do on everything, um, we are extracting about 600 different fields of data. Not every document has 600 fields, of course, but we are searching for it. So you see some of the kind of common ones here. 
Uh, for those on the e-discovery side, we might be doing what's called basic bibliographic analysis, um, people fields, author recipient CCBCC, and then the, the kind of typical contenders date, doc type, and title. On the information governance side of the house, we might be looking for things like brand names, product names, who's the content owner, um, is this the kind of material that belongs in a legal hold or uh, needs to be retained under a retention policy or can be, you know, defensively deleted? So these are some of the attributes and things and, um, that we're looking for. That's a whole other topic if you're interested in tagging, and of course it's the greatest subject on earth. Why wouldn't you be? Contact us and we'll, we'll go into glorious detail on that topic. But today we're going to talk about data visualization. So let's assume processing and tagging have taken place, and that kicks us into data visualization, which here at Valora we accomplish with our product called Black Hat. Um, so I'll show you a little bit what that looks like. So this is our kind of very simple, simple system architecture here at Valora. We have uh, a SQL database underlying everything, also soon to be ported to Oracle, so we'll have both. Um, and then we have, as I described, we have what we call our powerhouse platform layer. And powerhouse is where all the fancy smarts are taking place. All the auto processing, auto translation, auto coding, auto unitization, auto redaction, you name it. That's all happening here. Um, we have the quality control. That's when we're putting eyes on to maybe do a little bit of cleanup. And we have an administrative console to operate powerhouse. But sitting on top is Black Hat. And Black Hat is what we call our presentation layer. It's basically a hosted system like any other. It's, in, it's accessed and enabled over the web through all kinds of secure protocols. You log into it and you have access to your data. Um, we call that a presentation layer though because yes, you're viewing, there's that site thing again, you're viewing your documents for sure and all that delicious coding, tagging information that we've captured about everything, but there's also all kinds of analytics that can take place because once you understand what a document is and the content that it contains and 600 attributes about it, you can learn all kinds of nifty things about your population in general. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, I know there's a couple geeks on the call today, so this one's for you geeks. Uh, here's the real architecture. That uh, first one was the simplified. Um, here's what's really going on. Again, I'm not going to go into gory detail here, but there's all kinds of sophisticated intake and export um, uh, once we've analyzed the data. You can see in the blue is really the powerhouse layer. Um, in this case, although we support lots of different output formats and DMSs and things like that and repositories, we're going to be talking about the green, which is Valora's own, called Black Hat. It is not necessary to always go into Black Hat here at Valora, but many of our clients really like it because of some of its nifty features, and that's what I'm going to show you in a second. So just so we're all on the same page, what is she talking about? What is data visualization? Uh, data visualization is some kind of fancy tech speak for pretty pictures basically. You've seen data visualization hundreds of times whether you called it that or not. Um, it's basically a general term that helps people understand data in a way that's very intuitive, very obvious, and sometimes a lot of fun. Um, it, it makes heavy use of charts and graphs and heat maps and animation and ultimately creates a dashboard of information, in this case, about documents and about document content. So Valora's version of data visualization is very specific to the corpus of documents that we are analyzing. So here are examples that I'm sure you've already seen. Typical data visualization. A chart. Sales versus operating income. Very, very clear. What you're looking at here, this pretty chart up here with the blue line and the red bars, is actually the same thing as what lies below here, 2009-2010. These are actually the same data, but it just looks so much cooler and so much obvious to see that the company was doing pretty well up until September of 2010 there um, in a way that is really hard to glean from just the raw data output that's on the bottom. And chances are when we receive a document for analysis, it's going to look like the bottom because it's going to be an Excel file. And what we can produce, of course, is the pretty picture, is the map up top. 
and we can do that across documents. That's one of the things people don't always realize about data visualization. If we are analyzing, you know, some corporation's back file and there's 300,000 documents in there and there's sales reports from every quarter, we can build this kind of visualization just by identifying the sales reports in the sea of other stuff and then essentially data mining across them to produce the data that you're looking for. So that was a lot to swallow right there. I'll stop for a second and see, Elise, if there are any questions so far um, regarding data visualization or the Black Hat Powerhouse architecture. Okay, I will do that. Um, so here are some additional data visual examples, again, that you already would know. You've seen pie charts. They tell a wonderful story. This was just a fun pie chart that I happened to find I thought was kind of neat. Um, here's one that you may have seen around. It's kind of a new social media type of style of data visualization. It's a word cloud. And what you're looking at actually is a generated image that was the result of analyzing a Valora press release about uh, auto translation. And so when you look at this a little closer, you can see why it chose different words to make prominent and why some words are near each other. All of those are visual clues. That's what data visualization is. Probably, almost certainly, documents was the most commonly used word in our press release. Obviously, Valora featured pretty prominently, too. But we actually spoke in that press release about a case study involving Japanese documents. You can see Japanese right here. So this, again, this is an automatically created picture that is the result of analyzing the frequency of words, the placement of words near other words, um, prominence on the sheet versus against you know, normal English language usage. Um, and that produces, based on some fancy statistics, produces the word cloud. So again, more examples that you know. Another one that you're familiar with would be called a heat map. This is a heat map. Obviously, this is in the United States. I believe that this was a heat map of temperature one day, with it being quite, kind of hot here in the, in the southeast. Um, but a heat map can be used to display any kind of data. It doesn't have to actually be temperature. Uh, I could have said this is uh, you know, the distribution across the United States of people who intend to vote for Donald Trump. Now, I just made that up. I have no basis there. But you would understand what that meant if I showed you this picture and I said those words, as opposed to if I showed you 50 states' worth of polling data. So that's data visualization um, in a nutshell. Clearly, hands down, the top prize for best data visualization ever goes to U.S. News and World Reports. If you've ever picked up that newspaper at the airport or in a hotel, you've seen their cute little pictures. And here are good examples. Um, they are just aces at data visualization. They take things that would otherwise be kind of boring or kind of a lot to weed through, and they just make their point really, really quickly. So now that you understand what data visualization is in general, I will show you what it looks like when we're talking about documents and document content. Because content's kind of dry. It's basically text at the end of the day. Sometimes there's pictures and stuff. But the information that you can get by analyzing a document population can be very rich. OK, looks like we have a question. So let's take a look at what that says. How does Black Hat compare with other data visualization tools? Um, I'm not a super whiz on everybody else's data visualization tool. Uh, there are lots of them. Um, I would say it's probably pretty comparable in terms of the types of display that we utilize. Most data visualization tools will use pie charts and bar charts and graphs and heat maps, and we use all of those things too. Um, what's different with Black Hat is that we're really going into the meat the actual textual content of each file. And most of the solutions that are out there to do visualization, either in information governance or in e-discovery, are very surface level, very lightweight. They're really only about file metadata. And they're pretty thin because of that. Um, Valora's solution, as I said, is literally going into the content and using all of that tagging data from the beginning. So we get a very, very rich set of data visualization, which I'm going to show you in just a sec. So that was a good question. OK. 
Okay, so this is what data visualization sort of looks like in our universe. These are actually Black Hat screenshots. I'm just going to flip through these quickly because I'm going to show it to you live. So why bother with a screenshot when you can see it live? All right, here we go. And all the warnings that go with live demos, this is really, really live. Here we go. Um, I'm just going to log in. And what I'm going to show you here is a database of media documents, uh, press announcements, um, you know, video, uh, news, you know, news footage, stuff like that, um, about uh, counterfeit goods and smuggled goods, all kinds of things that are illicitly sold and traded uh, all across the world. Things like luxury brands, you know, fake Rolex watches and fake Louis Vuitton bags, as well as uh, products that tend to have different uh, tax and price points in different states, like cigarettes and guns and uh, liquor, all different, you know, it's very different from state to state to state, so that builds up a big black market. So what you're looking at here, this is a dashboard view, which we call first look, of the documents that have been collected of this genre. Um, and so you can kind of see what you're looking at, each of these boxes, each little control here, is um, something that we have tagged previously as the document passed through Powerhouse. So you'll see some common fields like the document type. Now over here on the left is the file extension. That's where most systems kind of stop. They'll say, oh, it's a PDF or oh, it's an Excel file. Um, Valora literally goes in and gets the actual document type. So you can see, hopefully you can see this on your screens, it's a little small. We're showing, you know, the difference between a press release and a media report, or court documents versus testimony, things like that. Um, here is the creation date of the document, which, as I'm sure many of you know, can be very different than the last modified date in the metadata, um, and so on and so forth. Each of these fields is something that Valora has effectively auto-coded from the content of each document. And so you'll see things that are specific to this kind of document set. Remember what it was, counterfeit goods, smuggled goods, stolen goods, all of those kinds of documents. And so what you're seeing here, you'll see some brands. Um, there's also somewhere on here, oh, I may not be showing it at the moment, here's everything that we've collected. Um, not all of them showing necessarily. You can pick and choose here in Black Hat. Um, wholesalers, um, different types, if you look down here, different types of activity that is present in the content. So whether it's smuggling or counterfeit or underage, um, illegal manufacture, things like that. And so everything on here is something that we've captured with Powerhouse and displayed in uh, Black Hat. And so one of the things that is neat about Black Hat is that everything is live. And so, was that a question? Okay, I'll keep going. Um, when I click around in Black Hat, I'm effectively performing searches without having to construct any complex Boolean queries. So if I, you know, if I want to know what, tell me what went on in 2014. Clearly, a lot of documents got added then. So if I look up here, I'm now I've now reduced the world to 2014, and I've fanned 2014 out across the months. And clearly it was, it was more active towards the uh, middle of the month. So if I want to just, let's say, just show me August of 2014. Again, I'm going to fan out. That's to week ending. Um, and so you'll notice that the whole dashboard is changing whenever I click on something. So I'm now down to only 48 documents. I might want only a certain type. You know what? I'm only interested in press incident coverage. That's coverage in the media. Okay, I'm now down to 25 docs. Oh, you know what? Show me press incident coverage for anything. I can click out the chain, you know, links in the chain all the time. And the, the world redraws according to what I have selected. That's a common theme in data visualization in general and in Black Hat specifically. So again, I can click on anything here. Show me press incident coverage, you know, related to smuggling. That's domestic. And again, these are all the kind of auto-coded fields. And I've narrowed it down to, let's say, 142 documents. So at any point, I can kind of switch over to a more kind of traditional database view and see what's going on. 
So here are those files. Um, I probably picked a big one for some reason to load. <laughs> so it'll come up in a moment. But basically, what you're looking at along the top in the kind of table view here is the uh, coded information. Again, this was the auto-coded information with Powerhouse. And then down below, you're seeing a copy, uh, essentially an image picture of whatever it was. This one actually was a, a Word document originally, which I can launch at any time, and it will literally uh, download it or launch Word if I have access rights, which I do. Okay, so you can see um, illegally imported Nissans. Go figure. <laughs> uh, wouldn't think that that was a thing that people illegally imported, but evidently they do. So you get uh, the feel for how this works. Um, we also have, just to, to give you a sense, this is what Powerhouse uses to do all of its magic. It's all in here as are all the properties. If you want to see exactly from this document kind of what we captured, here it is. And again, if you have the, the appropriate uh, rights, you can go in and actually edit this. If you say, well, it was smuggling, but there was also you know, interdiction involved, you as a user, if you have that power, can go in and, and make the changes, et cetera, right in here. Um, this kind of leads us up into what the eDiscovery folks will recognize as document review. And so I'll show you our kind of document review view. Again, trying to really focus on the view of things. And of course, I keep doing this on the world's slowest document to render. Uh, but we do have a document by document view. Not generally Valora's thing. We prefer to look at things in terms of batches and, and grouping related content together. But if you just have to go through doc by doc, you can. So back to the regular view. And so this is kind of a, a more traditional view, typical of what you would see. Um, I'm just going to go to all docs for a minute to show you what video looks like. If I can find a video, let me do it this way. Um, because we are also uh, pulling the text from video using some speech to text technology. Um, MP4 is probably a video. Let's grab those. And so we'll go in here. Uh, oh, let me see if I can find a better looking one. There we go. So this is a video of um, kind of sniffing dogs that are sniffing out illegal cigarettes. Um, and so we can actually launch the video. We have the converted text from the video. And you can see that we actually were able, based on that, to do some of that textual coding. All of that's going to, again, help set up the visualization so that when we're back in first look, we can actually see information about video files. Okay, um, another way of looking at data other than this kind of dashboard view or what we call the list view, the tabular view, is in a kind of relationship, what we call the analytics view, of what's related to what. So here we have the different types of products that we are evaluating in this data set, tobacco, electronics, clothing, pharmaceuticals. And they are essentially mapped against the types of illegal activity on the right. So if I'm really interested in tobacco smuggling, I can kind of hover on this line, and it will tell me some information about that intersection. Uh, there, you can see that the tobacco is the biggest bubble. In other words, that's the most uh, prominent of the, the products presented in this database. And smuggling, although by a smaller margin, is the biggest uh, offense. And so if I want to learn about tobacco smuggling, if I click here, I now see the world according to tobacco smuggling. So if I go back here, this again is the world according to tobacco smuggling. So these are, this is what the document population tells me about the world of tobacco smuggling. I did not have to construct any kind of search to do that. So just to go back to charts for a minute, uh, sorry, analytics. And looks like there's a couple questions, so I'll stop there for questions. Let's see. OK. Um, can the charts be customized? Absolutely. Um, and it says, how does the client choose the right chart type? Um, so I'll go back to charts. Uh, basically, um, Charts come forward for anything that we capture about a document. So if you're really interested in zip codes or product brand names or account numbers or titles of magazines, it, it kind of doesn't matter. As long as we're able to capture that data, which is 
pretty likely, we're able to display that data. So the way that that gets customized and the way to, you know, that the client can help pick the right ones is in conversation with our project management. That's what they do. They work with you to say, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want to know about the docs? And what's the best way to display that? Um, some data lends itself better to pie chart format. Some lends itself better to bar chart. Um, and then we're just going to get to some other and the fancier analytics, sometimes a heat map. Um, it kind of depends on the kind of data. We'll determine the, the type of chart to use. And it depends also on what it is you want to kind of know or capture uh, about each document. It will also kind of dictate the best sort of display. Okay, and then another question we got was how do end users author and share their own dashboards and reports? Okay, I'm going to get to that in just a second, actually, and show you how you can create reports of this data and either send them to other folks, uh, you know, via an email or a notification, or how you can actually download them in, in a report function. Again, assuming you have access and, and permission to do so, you can actually download subsets of data and reports to your desktop. So I will show you that in a moment. And one other question was, are there different levels of authorization for users? Yes, exactly. Um, typically, we have three levels. Um, there's a kind of basic user level that is allowed uh, read access only. In other words, they're allowed to see the data, but they cannot change any of it, and they cannot download it or take it out of Black Hat. Then we have folks that are at a kind of a re uh, more advanced user, what we call a read-write user. They have the ability to see anything. They have the ability to go in and change data like I was doing in the Properties tab. Um, but usually they don't have the ability to, to download data or take it out or of Black Hat. And then we have administrative users who typically have full access um, are, in addition to full access in terms of the content, they also are kind of managing the user levels in Black Hat and new users and setting notifications and things like that. We'll talk about some of that in a moment. So just to kind of finish on out the analytics discussion, um, there's a couple different ways of displaying data. This is, this is a twofer. In other words, it's, it's one aspect against another. It's uh, sort of category, product category versus illicit activity, you can also have, here are some of the other displays, you can also have a three-way, which is really pretty cool. Um, and what you're looking at is um, the activity again, the, the, the type of, um, so it's the illicit activity against the location by state against government agency. So one of the uh, fields, one of those, um, coding moments, one of those attributes that we capture is whether or not a government entity has been mentioned anywhere in the content. So, and then determining whether that's state legislature, local law enforcement, um, in this case ATF because a lot of this data is related to ATF, and so on and so forth. So I can do any kind of combination that I want to see very easily like this. Um, and what we're not showing here, but it's very, very common, is to have one or two of these attributes be people. And so you can look at the relationships between people or parties. Who talks to who and with what frequency? So I don't have that to demo today, but you can probably make that leap from here. The other kind of display that I think you all should see, let me go back to all docs, is what it looks like against a heat map. Remember the heat map? So right now, what you're looking at is essentially how many documents are pertaining to different locations in the United States. And you can see that New York and Virginia are very prominent. Um, if I hover over New York, whoop, I moved my mouse, um, it will tell me how much of the population we're actually talking about. Um, and I can, I can zoom in this way as well. I'm very interested in documents about New York. How does the world change when I talk about New York? Um, let me try a more obvious example. How does the world change when I talk about Texas? You know, now who? Look at the difference. Okay, see how different the map looks. And so that's one way. And you can kind of, again, drill down uh, as much as you want as long as we're capturing that data. So I'll show you a little bit what it looks like by city. And these are essentially what I'm showing are incidents um, by city. One of our clients tracks this illicit behavior in cities across the United States. And you can see, not surprisingly, New York is a way big offender here. 
Um, the blue lines and this yellow line are actually state highways and the yellow is Interstate 95. Most of us today, I think, are on the East Coast. We are apparently the highway of smuggling and illicit trafficking. So you can kind of see that very obviously on the map. And again, if I want to go in and say, you know, show me what's going on in Washington, D.C., I can just zoom in just like that. And yes, everything will keep pace with me. This is the world according to Washington, D.C. So that's at the, the city level um, at this point. So I wanted you guys to, to see that, uh, to get kind of a baseline understanding of what data visualization really is and where it comes from. And then I can show you some of the fancies that were asked about, for example, in some of the questions. So you may notice um, over here on the left, this is, of course, the originating document type, PDF and Word mostly here. Some of the other areas that are in here and that we track would be whether or not the document is a duplicate or a near duplicate? Are there other documents that are similar to it in the population? I'm just going to turn these guys off for a second just to see if we have any in our current. I don't. Um, but I'll keep watching for one because there are some in here that I could show you. They'll show up under special. Um, the other two things that are here are called selection sets. And you'll see those listed here. Again, something fancy that you can do with visualization. Basically, what we've done, what a selection set is, is a custom grouping of documents for a specific purpose. And so if I hover over this one, you'll see we made a custom grouping about Louis Vuitton. Um, and so if we want to see, right now I have Washington showing, but if I want to just see those, show me everything that's in Louis Vuitton. Of course, they're going to be checked. Um, looks like we only have one. <laughs> uh, and then, and then I will have access immediately to that custom selection set. Let me try and choose a different selection set and we'll see if there's um, something a little more valuable. There we go. And so these, if I want, if, you know, as I said, a lot of these documents are about tobacco, but if I want to see everything else, there's two ways I can do that. I could make a selection set like I did, or I could actually go into first look. Um, and you remember how I clicked on all of these? I could also click on the gray areas and say, the gray is the not. Give me not tobacco. Okay. And now I've already done that, so there's no point, but just so you can see. And so you have this ability to make kind of custom little populations. For those of you who are old enough to remember a product called Summation, had suitcases as a very similar concept. Um, you can also kind of save your work at any time and hand it off to someone else. That was one of the questions. So for example here, if I hit the print button, it doesn't actually just start printing this content out on the printer. What it does is say, I'm going to make a report. I can include a table of contents, say Sandy's report, and kick it off for processing. And that's what that little blue arrow means. And so now in the background, it's actually going to make, I kind of stupidly made a report of 26 documents. That's going to take a while. Uh, next time I'll do it with two documents. <laughs> um, but that's basically making a report in the background of the documents that are here. And it's going to pull them all as a giant set of PDFs with a table of contents similar to what you see here. I can also, if for some reason I want to utilize this data outside of Black Hat, I can cause an Excel worksheet to take place. Um, and it will go ahead and create this material in an Excel format, basically a CSV readable by Excel that I can import into Excel and use separately. So. I can check in and see how our, uh, we're still pending and in progress, but I can show you some older ones uh, if you like. Here's an Excel that looks like Aniela created at some point. So here I've, I've literally launched it in Excel and you can see what it looks like. And I'll go back to Black Cat and see if I can get one of the PDFs to come up. Um, let's see if we can get that one. And so this was one, somebody did not, they just printed one file. But you can see what that looks like. Again, just showing you that that's how it works. A um, couple other things that are kind of fun with data visualization. Um, what you see here is a drag and drop area. Uh, I'm not going to literally do it because I don't have a, a file on hand. But I could bring a file in and drag and drop it into this little box and it will literally process before our eyes. 
which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, wouldn't recommend you know dragging 40,000 vials into there, but if you have one or two that you want to add into the population with all the same configuration, it's a wonderful way to do that. All right, I'm going to stop and see if there are questions. Elise, any other questions so far? Okay. Um, a couple of the things that you should see in addition to this is that you can essentially take somebody else and bring them into your world. So if you set up a certain search, in this case I have non-tobacco products, you can literally cause that to go to somebody else. Um, and so Black Hat is aware of email systems and basically assuming that person has the rights to log into Black Hat, um, I just put their email address here and then when they click this link, they'll have to log in of course, but once they do, they'll be taken to exactly the setup that I want them to see. So it's a nice nifty feature for different folks in an organization to kind of curate data that they want other folks to see. We also have an automated version of that. Um, I'll show you that a little bit under notifications. I think this is my password. Yes, good job. Okay, so notifications um, is an basically, we have one set up for smuggling. Um, and if I enter a date, it's basically going to cause an email to go out that says, okay, here's what's new under this topic area. In this case, happened to be smuggling. So any new material that's come in that's related to this topic area is automatically going to email out in a link. Um, you can also set those up to go, <coughs> excuse me, automatically <coughs> upon receipt of the data or after certain date and time periods. I think I've shown you most of the fancies of Black Hat. Are there any questions about Black Hat before I jump back to the presentation? <coughs> and I'm okay, I'm just choking. Okay, so I'm gonna log out of here. Yes and jump back to this, just to take you through the end. Okay, so we get asked this a lot about, you know, well, I have this DMS and I love it, or I have relativity and I love it. So one of our salespeople asked me to pull together the top 10 reasons to consider Black Hat over some of the other alternatives. So I'm just going to lay them out here for you. Hopefully I've covered most of these during the presentation. One thing that I will mention, and this is number 10 here, is that because Valora owns this software and created this software, we have ultimate flexibility in what it displays, how it displays, what we capture, um, you know, uh, almost anything. We can pretty much change anything on the fly. And that's a really helpful thing to clients because not everybody knows what they want just at the outset. Often it, you have to get in and utilize the data and see you know, what you have and what's trending so that you can decide what you want to see in terms of visualization. So having that flexibility is very, very helpful and a lot of off-the-shelf products do not offer you that kind of customization. So a couple other things, some are related to e-discovery, some are related to information governance. And I hope you notice that whole time I never actually constructed a search, but I got at whatever I was looking for. That's some of the feedback that we've gotten from users there is they're really, really dissatisfied with search. They can't get at what they want. They just want to kind of surf around. Um, you can, of course, search in Blackhead. That, I mean, obviously you can do that. But our goal is to really save that for the super users and have the basic users just be able to just point and click and go. Um, I mentioned also that this supports, of course, electronic data, but also da uh, paper files that have been scanned can be brought right into this fold. Um, obviously, paper documents don't have any starting metadata. That's one of the benefits of going through Powerhouse in the first place. And then possibly the number one reason, um, if you were to kind of compare costs, 
Um, Blackhead is, of course, much, much more cost effective than utilizing some of the industry standard things that don't have half of these uh, capabilities. So um, that's really the number one reason, but certainly not the only. Um, if you'd like a little more information about Valora, you can take a quick look here. Where I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions. Um, I believe a copy of this will be provided to everybody here today. So um, that'll kind of show up in your inbox at some point. And I'll open it up for further questions at this point. Oh, here it is. Thank you. Uh, can you elaborate on the drag and drop feature? Yes, absolutely. So the drag and drop is meant for either late additions to the population or circumstances where there's kind of an ongoing need of small sets of data to enter the universe. Drag and drop's really not a good fit when you have large batches of data. So you're not going to want to use drag and drop for your back file. You're not going to want to use it for your uh, collected documents for a litigation matter, but the onesie twosies that come up all the time, it's a perfect fit for that. And basically what happens is the user logs into Black Hat, just drags the file right up into the little dotted area, and Black Hat right then and there will uh, do a quick check on whether essentially that's a permissible file to enter the universe. Uh, if it's, God forbid, if it's got a virus in it or it's not actually a, a document content type of file, like you try to upload a DLL or something, um, it will refuse that at the gate. But assuming it's permissible file type, it will absorb that right on into uh, Powerhouse and then place it in Black Hat as soon as it's been processed. Um, that happens very quickly. I mean, unless you have some kind of gargantuan document, which I would not recommend for drag and drop. Uh, but if you have sort of a you know, typical Word document or whatever, that's going to all take place in a couple seconds. So it's, it's pretty nifty. Other questions? All right. Well, I'll leave you with this fun little quote uh, that I like from Forbes. Um, it's getting old already, March 2012, uh, but I like it because it describes Valora too, and I hope that you agree after learning about Black Cat and all the fun things that it and data visualization can do. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate your time. I will stick around for a couple minutes in case people have additional questions or just want to comment in general. Thanks again. All right, well, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon, I hope.